Hello everyone and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today in today's session. My name is Firas and I am the event planner for uh, Microsoft uh, Reactor. Um, before we start, I have uh, just uh, some things to go over with. Um, please take a moment to read our code of conduct. We seek to provide a respectful environment for both our audience and presenters. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary and please remain professional and on topic. Uh, the session is recorded. It will be available uh, through Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel in about 24 to 48 hours. Um, I'll be sharing the link uh, to our YouTube channel in the chat. I'll also be sharing uh, the link for our Reactor, Reactor Mira page in case you want to know what other events we're having. Um, which brings us to our session today. This session will run approximately for one hour with time for questions uh, throughout. Please, uh, everyone, um, uh, help, uh, welcome, let's welcome Sam. He's our speaker for today. He's the cloud advocate, regional cloud advocate. Uh, Sam, I'm going to hand this over to you now. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Sam Ronsky. I am the regional cloud advocate here at Microsoft uh, for the San Francisco Bay Area. My my job is to kind of help make it awesome uh, or, or help you all build awesome things with Microsoft technology. Um, so we are looking at PlayFab this this month. Uh, and play. this is kind of the session that I was most excited for because it means we're doing a bunch of stats things. Um, this was this was sort of what I initially saw. I was like, oh, this would be really cool. Um, so we are adding stats and and uh, statistics and player metrics to our game. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, this is our game. We have Flappy Cube. If you're if you don't know what this is, you can go back to the uh, Reactor YouTube and check some of the previous ones. Uh, there's there's two videos where we introduced how to actually build the game, and then also introduced this login system so you can actually log in to PlayFab, create accounts, uh, and register new users. Uh, so. Let's click play here, and uh, we will just get going into our game. Uh, I am using the PlayFab SDK for, for all of this. Um, it's the same as the last video left off, um, so we're just going to keep going with it. Um, so I'm going to log in here. Oh, there we go. Right, there we go. <laughs> um, and if we could log in now, we'll log in. I've changed a few things, um, so we actually, we actually get playing. Uh, but there's a few fun things that are happening. This is what we're going to be talking about. Uh, if we go and look at my PlayFab metrics, we can see all sorts of things that have been happening. Um, I should point out, this is the free version of PlayFab. This is no, no credit card, no anything. You just get this out of the box. Um, so if you want to integrate this into your, into your thing, um, hopefully, hopefully we're helping you out. Um, so what this is is showing all the new users that have signed into our or created accounts over our uh, about week that we've had this integration going. Um, so you can kind of see API calls, things like that, logins over the past time. Um, obviously, this is a demo, so, so it's kind of spiky. Um, but that's how that works. We're going to be taking a look at um, events and statistics. Um, so events are things that happen in your, in your world. There are a uh, player, player lost, or something happened, or a player leveled up, things like that. Um, the other thing is statistics. Statistics track things that are characteristics of that character, um, or that player, rather. Um, we're not dealing with characters in this. PlayFab does support characters, so if you have multiple characters, or um, you want to have multiple characters for one player or login account, um, that's possible. Um, similar stuff works, just a slightly different API call. Um, we're going to be taking a look at those, though, so you can actually track things like statistics or how many games somebody played. Um, and that's what we're going to be kind of looking at here, is how to how to take this and kind of process it and do some fun things to actually kind of figure out what's happening. <laughs> so these are these are sort of the basic statistics. The one that I found most interesting was this play stream monitor, um, which looks boring. <laughs> this is a world map, and on the right you can see play stream. Um, this is going to be all the events processed by PlayFab throughout um, our browsing here, and so we can actually see what's happening here. So if a player logs in, we're going to see an event. If a player loses focus on the game window, that's another event. So if they click off and do something else, you can actually track that and see how much actual active time was somebody focused directly on your game. Uh, you can also see like logins or statistics changes or things like that. So that's what we're going to be doing. 
we're going to be kind of looking at this and, and seeing how we can kind of integrate and get more events to appear here. The cool thing is, it already happens. Um, if we go and run this while this is open, uh, I didn't really think about how I was going to do this. Um, so let's, I guess we'll just run this uh, and we'll we'll go from there. Um, it's managing the screen real estate is a little bit uh, hard, um, but there we go. World of there. Uh, and then we go to our testing and click login. Now our player logged in. That's cool. Let's go back to our metric, though, and you can see a whole bunch of things happened. These are all the events that happened from that little process. Um, and you can even see we changed our focus. We are no longer focused on our game. Um, so what happened? First, we, we logged in. So an entity logged in and a session started. We also changed our focus. We actually focused on the game. Next, the player logged in. And what that means is that we now are logged in and we actually know where uh, I live in Oakland. Um, so we have now logged in in Oakland and you can actually see where the player logged in and that it was the test player that logged in in Oakland. Uh, and we also have a setting that automatically updates the uh, display name of the user every time they log in. So you can see that the player display name changed as well. Um, so you can see all the events that happened. Uh, you can also see uh, information about the device if you were collecting that and some of the uh, client focus change. So that's all the stuff that already is collected for you. This is all just built in from all the things we had. Any other API calls or interactions you have with Playfib are also going to show up here. So you're going to be able to see all of that. Uh, and I didn't show this because I went fast, um, but we can actually turn this on so logins never fade out. Uh, we should see a, an icon pop up the next time I do this. <laughs> so let's, let's give that a shot um, and see what happens. So if we do uh, our user again, there we go, and log in. We get back into our game. Uh, we can stop that. And if we go and look here, we should now see a user icon over Oakland. Um, so we, we've, we can actually see where people are up, appearing and logging into your game. And you can see all those events got added again. We can also investigate these things and actually kind of explore them a little bit deeper. It's just a JSON blob, so we can actually see all the stuff tied to those events um, of what's going on, what's happening, where they're coming from, all, all of that. It's all available to you, and you can just kind of go and browse it. There's also player stuff. Um, so there's a lot. I've also slightly tweaked this. There, there are a few things that just uh, I've already added. But if we go and look at our test user, um, I've added a reactor um, avatar image because we could. And it also means that those uh, events in the um, play stream are going to show up with that icon. So you can actually have that player icon and be a little bit more distinct. But there's a whole bunch of things here. <laughs> um, there's a whole, whole bunch. Um, play stream is going to show events for that player. Same thing with the events. But this is filtered down to that one user. Um, there's also a limit here. What that's going to do is do a sampling. Um, so if you only want to take, if you, if you have a very popular game, for example, you probably don't want to see every event that every player is doing in your game because we, you saw with one login that triggered five things. If we're recording statistics and events and match data and all, all of that, seeing all of that appear here might be a bit much. Uh, so you can tune that down to so only see a sample of, of the events that are occurring. Uh, also, we have our statistics. Statistics are player based things. Um, so these are typically managed by the server. And they're intended to give you a way to manage specific details about that person uh, or about that player. And so these might be XP or it might be. Uh, I guess that's sort of the one that I'm thinking. We're going to be doing games played or um, games lost or Distance traveled, one of those three. Haven't quite figured that out yet. We'll figure it out, uh, depending on if there's anybody who wants to uh, suggest something. <laughs> um, and that is sort of the statistics thing. So there's really two places that these are going to show up, either your statistics, where you're going to have things happening, or in your, your play stream, where you're going to have events that occur. Um, you might also want to see what events have happened historically. Uh, and so that's where the data explorer comes in. This is going to allow you to actually uh, investigate and see a little bit more about what's actually happening. Um, so let's see here. If we go and plug in our, um, I think it was uh, test. 
Um, something. I, I actually haven't done this yet, so we we don't actually have any data here. Um, but these are all the events that are occurring. These are these are a bunch of different uh, data points that you can actually get in your day, in your uh, information. They're listed down here, so you can actually go and look at all of these. There's a bunch of data stored inside of them, so you can actually go and explore and see what's happening. So there's focus change, for example, will store uh, if they're focused or unfocused. Um, so focus state is true. So this means we, we focused on the screen, whereas focus state false would be we, we move somewhere else and we're looking somewhere else. Um, so this gives you a way to kind of view those stats. There's a bunch of other things you can do too. Um, again, this is, this is just the super cool part. Um, some of this we're not going to get super deep into because it's just a lot. Um, but this is sort of the, the really fun part for me because it means you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Those statistics, for example, you can use to uh, control or, or give the players online saves so they can actually have a save state that is stored in the cloud, which means if they log into that player from any, any device, whether it's a phone or something else, they can pull that stat down and they can use that and rely on that to actually update and use all their stuff. Um, so their level or all their other stats will, will persist between them. Um, there's a few other things. We've been looking at players as just a list of players. So we can just search and find all the players in the, in the game. You can also segment your players. And what this does is actually create a subset of players in your game. Um, so in this case, there's four that are created. Uh, and then I have one that I have added just as a quick uh, thing, um, because I, I've been testing this and added games played. Um, so there, there's four that you end up getting. You get all players, which is just a collection of everything. Um, but then you also get like lapsed players, which are people who have not logged in in 30 days. Um, so maybe maybe they left or are doing something else and they have become inactive. Um, you can also track people who are active or people who have paid money, all these different things. Um, you can also create, create your own. That's what I did here. Um, so if we want to do that, we do new segment um, best. Uh, and then you just figure out what you want the what what, what you want to filter by. Um, so we can do anything. Uh, in this case, I used a, t a statistic value and said games played is greater than some value. And what this does is just create these delineations between users or people in your game. And you can also introduce A/B tests over this, for example. Um, so you can actually have multiple different uh, segments of users and ship out maybe a different set of stats to those users. Um, so maybe maybe they jump slightly higher in our game or slightly lower um, or the, the blocks move faster. You can change these things and see, do we lose players if we if we increase the jump or or if things go faster? Are people getting further and higher scores? Like, how, how does this impact our game? You can actually tweak that and and use this as a way to more broadly uh, test these things. Um, so that's one of the examples of things we're not going to, to get into, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> We have a lot to cover. I haven't even done any code yet, um, but there we go. That is, I think, an overview of lots of this stuff. Um, there's a whole bunch here. It gives you a, a whole bunch of reports, um, something I haven't shown and I'm not going to because email, um, but you will actually get a re weekly report of uh, all the things. It should be in here somewhere, dashboards, reports. Um, and so you can actually see reports generated for you that have information about different parts or things happening in your game. Um, so pretty useful way to kind of tell, like, are there more users this month than last month? Or how many us new users are we gaining? Or are people leaving? Th things like that. You can actually use this to detect that. Um, and again, all of this just comes out of the box. Um, I didn't configure any of this except the uh, games played statistic. Um, so that's the only addition that I've made. And none of these come from that. Uh, so. That's what we're going to be uh, implementing today. That was a really fast overview, but we're, we're going to take a look at it. Also, if you want to call out and have questions or suggestions about things we should track or experiment with, let me know, because um, that's kind of built into this entire formula is we can actually tinker a little bit and kind of explore a little bit of that. Um, eventually, once this game is done, um, hopefully after this session, actually, this should end up public. Uh, so you should actually be able to come, come and play the version of this game and see the code and actually go and play this and hopefully see how all of this works and, and give it give it a shot yourself. We'll see if that works. Um, so there we go. That is that is my intro. That was a long intro. Um, so 
what we're going to be doing is actually updating this. So what happens right now is when we sign in, when we click this login button, there's a series of things that happen. I have tweaked this slightly since the last time we did. We uh, were playing with this. Um, so what ends up happening is if I say log in the user, that's going to go and grab the email and password and send out a login with email address request. That's going to end up going off to uh, PlayFab and signing our user in if they have a valid password or returning an error if they don't. Um, and so what that's going to do is trigger this on user login function, which means we we've successfully logged in to PlayFab. Our user has authenticated. Um, so in this case, we do on user login, and that sends off a new thing to update their display name. We're doing this just so you can actually set a display name. Um, initially, when we were doing this, there was no display name. Uh, you don't need this. Um, it's just something that I thought was cool. So you could, because we're signing in with a, a uh, you or with a email and a password, this gives you the option to actually update your display name as you want. Um, you should get an error if you try to duplicate display names right now, but that's tweakable. You can change that. The next thing we have is on our on updated username. Uh, so after that, you get your uh, on update username. That's actually going to go off to the scene manager and uh, load the scene. Um, so I'm loading scene one, which is our actual game. That's actually going to go and, and load the scene for us. Um, and that pretty much transitions us into our actual game. What's happening behind the scenes is there's actually some slightly interesting uh, stuff that goes on with PlayFab to make all of this work. Um, and that happens inside of this PlayFab settings object. Um, so inside of here, there's actually a static player object that gets set when we've logged in. So once we've logged into PlayFab, this static player gets uh, assigned. And that actually stores our authentication context for this user. So now that we've signed in, we actually have uh, this thing automatically authenticated for us, which means when we actually make these web requests as a on behalf of this user, they're going to be authenticated already. They're, they're going to be associated with the logged in user already. Um, you can also provide your own. That's automatically filled for you if it's null. But if you, if you need to provide your own, that, that's an option for you. Um, so. Let's go and actually take a quick look at what's actually happening here. Um, so if we jump into our main game, go into scenes and jump into Flappy Cube, our actual game. Um, this is sort of where we're going to be implementing our fun thing. Um, we need to figure out what we're going to actually track. So I believe in this, we're just going to track games played. Um, I've already created that statistic. It should, uh, if, you, if your statistic doesn't exist already, or if your metric doesn't exist already, it will be created for you. Um, or you can go and create it yourself. Either of those work. Um, so here we have our player. What we're going to do is uh, attach something to the loss thing. Uh, so if I go into scripts, uh, and I forget where I put that, but I think it's an obstacles spawner. That's not right. There we go. <laughs> um, so this is going to. Uh, click the wrong thing. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so this is our game over, which literally just reloads the scene. Um, so it just gets the same scene and reloads it. Gets us back into where we were. What we can do here is actually insert something to uh, track that we have reset or that we've lost our game. Uh, so that's what I'm going to sort of insert here. Uh, on trigger enter 2D, we're just going to do a game over and load our scene. And then we're also going to assign something to actually an, uh, report that we, we've uh, not succeeded, that, we, that we've ended our game. Uh, so PlayFab, client API, exactly like we were doing previously. Uh, I need to actually include the namespace for this to work. Uh, there we go, <laughs> using PlayFab. Weird. OK. That's new. Uh, let's just do it this way, because <laughs> this will work. Oh. Uh, so we're going to add this. I don't know why this is. Interesting. Oh, oh, capitals. OK, got it. Uh, capitalization matters. That's the thing. <laughs> API is capitalized. Um, there we go. 
we we uh, do that, and then we can actually start creating that stuff. So let's actually write a player event. So again, I talked about uh, statistics versus events. Events are occurrences in your in your game. Um, in this case, it's it's a game over. Uh, but there's also statistics. The problem with statistics is by default you can't write to them. Uh, you cannot from a game you can't write to your statistics. That's by design. Um, what it what it means is that players do not have the ability to actually assign their own statistics from the game client. This prevents people from, for example, saying, hey, I now have a thousand levels um, and, and just doing that. They can report events, but that, that gives you a way to detect that. Whereas uh, giving access to just, uh, writing statistics from the client would mean that people could reassign this however they want. Um, so if we wanted to do that, we can. We're actually going to get into that in just a bit. Um, but this will give us a way to actually kind of uh, tinker with that. So if we write our new uh, player events and do new uh, right client player event web request, uh, let's throw this in a using statement so it's a little bit less weird. There we go. And there's our client model. So if we go and create something from this uh, and actually define our model, we can add some things. So let's give it an event name. Uh, and so this is going to be um, player lost event. Uh, these have a specific syntax. I believe it is alphanumeric uh, with underscores. Could be wrong there. Uh, it will give you an error if, if the event name is incorrect. Um, and then we can also do our authentication contact. Again, this is automatically inserted for us. So if we do this, it's actually just automatically going from playfab settings dot static player. It's already pulling that in. If you don't believe me, um, you can actually go and uh, check that. Um, I believe it's in here. Static settings, yeah. So if a client is logged in, it's going to do some things here to uh, assign that context for you. Um, so that's what, that's what ends up happening. Um, but that that's how that whole login flow goes. Um, so we have an, our event name. This is a, a unique name to kind of give it the event some identity. So it actually knows what's going on. Uh, then we just need a body. A bo the body doesn't have to be anything. It's just a set of key value pairs storing additional data about what happened. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to add a dictionary here. Uh, and throw some things into it just so we can have a reference. Um, so let's store uh, something. Player lost um, time. We don't need time. Uh, jump count? Force? Jump count. Sure. Uh, I don't know if this makes sense, but we're going to do it because uh, it's a thing that we can track. Um, so we're, we're just going to do that and stick the jump count into this. Uh, and to do that, we're just going to introduce a private uh, jump count into our, our events. Uh, we have our jump. Uh, let's do jump count plus. That will increment our jump count. And then when we actually jump, uh, we should hopefully um, see something happen. That's supposed to be a comma. There we go. All right, cool. Um, so jump count is going to be recorded when we lose. That So that will have a number of jumps we made during this journey that we're, we're going on. Uh, and so we have our right player event. We're missing two things. Um, I've also slightly changed the way that I write these. Um, this is the uh, event request. Um, you can also break this out into its own thing. Uh, and then we're just going to add on the two events. Um, so I use E because that habit. <laughs> um, and then we're just going to do two different logs. Um, so this is going to be a debug.log event recorded. And then uh, the other one, the other option that happens is we get an error. Um, so E here, uh, debug log error. And then we want to log our error. Let's change this name, make it a little bit more descriptive, uh, and do error. Uh, and we want to, sorry, I have, I have this uh, in my notes because I forget this function all the time. Um, error dot generate report. There we go. And that's going to give us a little bit more context about what ended up happening in this uh, error that, or this event that we, we just sent. Um, if there's an error, this will give us the ability to actually figure out why this didn't work. Uh, and then we'll do our load scene. 
Uh, and so that should send off our message for us. So if we run this, we should see this work. Um, so we can actually not skip the login, um, the, the player menu screen. That, that doesn't quite work because we don't actually we haven't actually logged in when, when we've done that. We will just get a null uh, player identity. They, they won't have an identity. Uh, and so we're going to jump back to our menu, do the login process and do all this. Uh, there's ways you can get around this. You can log a user in with some debug stuff. Um, but I'm going to do this because it kind of emphasizes sort of the login flow and stuff that we've done. Um, and maybe in the next, we will we'll pull this out. Um, let's do testing. Login. And then we can lose. And we have our event recorded here. Um, so you can see we have one event recorded for our new event of the uh, player lost event. Uh, so let's go and see what happened here. Um, so if we go back here and actually take a look at our data. That's where I want to go. We should hopefully um, be able to see our player events. Um, so we have currently a test um, that was a test. Uh, and eventually our new one should appear here. Um, these are these are the events that we're kind of triggering. Um, might take a little bit for it to show up in this uh, menu, unfortunately. Uh, but that's where this is where it's going to actually end up showing is we're, we're going to get a uh, event here. Uh, we should also see it down here somewhere. Um, so player device change logged in API operations. OK. Uh, that's not what we need, um, but I'm not entirely sure why it's not showing up. So I'll try it again and see what happens. <laughs> um, but live demo stuff. Uh, so we still get this. I'm a little bit curious if I have lost something because I inserted it right after loading a scene. I'm not sure that's the best way to do that. Um, so we're, we're going to tweak this a little bit and see if we can we can change some things. Um, so let's do test. And log ourselves in again. And then we, we lose a few times. <laughs> um, and we should start seeing these events uh, if, if what I've done is working. And if not, uh, this will turn into a different stream. <laughs> um, so we'll see what's going on here. Player lost. There we go. So we start seeing these events uh, pop in. Uh, because our game is still running in the background and we just keep falling into the ground and now we get player lost events. Um, so now we can actually start interacting with these. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of fun things that you can do as a result of these events coming in. Um, so in this case, we just lost a whole bunch of times. Um, but what we want to do, or at least what I want to do, is record the number of, of total games lost that a player has. Um, so how many games has the player completed over over their entire uh, use of or playing of the game. And so the way we do that is with automation. Um, this is another thing we're not going to get super deep into because it's it, it can go as deep as you want it and it's pretty awesome. Uh, but automation gives you a way to react to these things and respond to them uh, a little bit better. Um, so we get functions, rewarded ads, rules and scheduled tasks. Um, I believe we want a new rule. Um, which allows you to respond to specific actions by doing some other um, scripted thing. Cloud Script allows you to invoke Azure functions as a result of different things. So you can actually register a cloud function uh, and then use that as a, uh, a response for webhooks or anything else that you want to publish your information to. So in this case, we could have, when this happens, run this Cloud Script, for example. We should not need that because we're just going to be uh, doing some things. Um, so let's add our stuff. Um, so there's a few things that are going on here. Um, you can see there's this custom namespace thing that's happening here where we have player lost, but it has some stuff before it. Uh, it has title and then it has B6 DCA. That is the uh, ID for our title. Um, so in this case, that is Flappy Cube. 
So we have player lost from Flappy Cube. When that occurs, we are going to um, record player lost. Why we want to do this, the reason we're doing this style of thing, instead of just having a number that the client pushes, is that you actually lose that. Um, we will I'll show that at the end. I'm kind of keeping it in case we don't have time. I want to show you the right way to do things. And then we can we can go through the bad uh, or, or the, the thing that doesn't work or a different way to approach it. Um, there's different ways you can use statistics. We are using this to track player stats, things that we probably do not want the player to have direct access to because they could just say, actually, I've never I, I didn't lose that 20 times I just did because I left the game in the background. Instead, I only lost zero. Um, they could change that and just send it back up um, because it's just a, a number. Um, so this gives us a way to kind of avoid that by processing this on the server in response to events. Um, so conditions, we are going to add a condition. Uh, we actually do not need a condition. Um, thinking about different things. But what's going on here is we actually have a, a way to filter these events. We provided a bunch of body data to this uh, uh, event and so you can actually use this to filter out and only respond to events that have specific conditions met maybe only conditions where a player jumped a thousand times or something like that um, you, you can do that as well um, we don't need that but we do need an action so we're going to run an action this is also where you could run um, cloud functions for example or these cloud scripts um, but instead we are actually going to increment a player statistic and we're going to increment the games played statistic by one. Um, so what this is going to do is increment a statistic on the players called games played by one. Uh, this won't appear if you don't have it. Um, you can see I have two because, again, testing. Um, so we have games played and something else new. Um, this also doesn't do spaces, uh, but this gives you a way to do these. If you are just kind of working through this and you want to get started and you don't necessarily have the game all set up yet, you can actually uh, get around this by first creating a new player from the, this UI. But also, if you just go into one of these uh, users, you can just add statistics. Um, if, you, if you have access to this, you can just go in here and change something or add another new statistic. Um, so let's say uh, reactor streams. Um, and we can save that. Uh, oops, what happened? There's some errors on this page. Oh, no. <laughs> what did I do? Uh, so let's do actor. Oh, I need to create it. There we go. Actor streams, click create and save. And there we go. And now that player has a reactor streams statistic that they can pull down and access and see how many reactor streams they've done. Uh, I don't know if that's particularly a useful statistic, but it's there. And you can just add these. And that will mean that it will show up in these new rules. Um, so if we refreshed, we would be able to see that. Um, so this is going to increment games played by one. That's what we wanted to do this whole time. Uh, got distracted, but that's what we're, that's what we're here for. Um, so if I save this action, now, whenever a player loses, we should see them get an incremental um, number of games played. Um, so if we actually go and pull up this play stream monitor, we should be able to see those events come in in real time. So we can actually go here, play again, and actually see some things happen. Um, so we can do test. Let's at world of zero. There we go. And testing. And if we run this now, we'll log in. And we can see events are getting recorded. There's a bunch of stuff happening. Um, player event. A whole, a whole bunch of stuff is happening. Um, this is why you might want to filter some of these events. Um, but you can actually see we're now at 9, uh, 11 game losses. Um, and it's just counting up and up, 14, 15, 16, um, so forth. So we now are automatically responding and assigning these statistics to the player. So they know how many times they've lost our game by um, AFK in the background and, and doing all of that stuff. Um, and so this will just keep going and we'll get all these events for our player. Uh, and so you can actually kind of track this a little bit. Uh, so that is, is how you get a whole bunch of um, losses in, in this game that we created. Um, so now we're up to 35, it looks like, based off of the results of these uh, statistics. We can go and check that for the player. Um, so we actually go into players. 
uh, and find our test player. Need a better name than test. Test is a boring name. <laughs> but anyway, we can go here and look at our statistics. And we've lost 35 times. <laughs> so it, it adds up fast, but this, this is how this works. We're taking events and responding to them with a, a, a relatively basic action. Um, there's different ways you can respond to this. You can automatically ban somebody or do all sorts of other things. There's a few built in, but you can also customize this as much as you want with uh, Azure Functions. So if you want to just go crazy, you can. <laughs> um, you, if you want to respond to a player lost by generating some custom image for them, uh, that should work. You just register a function here. Uh, I don't have one prepared, um, but you give it a function name and a URL, and then you'd be able to actually just refer to that instead. So instead of automatically incrementing, it would actually invoke this function for you. Uh, and you can either send it to a, a queue or an HTTP request. Um, either of those work. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, this whole, whole setup was super cool when I was looking at it because it, it just gives you all these different fun things you can do. Um, so that is events. We've responded to events. We've recorded a statistic. Now let's actually take a look at statistics themselves and actually play a little bit more with that. Um, so what I'm going to do is also in this because uh, I guess well, well, this code is going to be going away because I don't actually want this in this game. Um, but we're going to demo this just so, so people have a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. And we're going to actually work with player statistics. Um, so a few things we can do is actually when this player spawns, let's actually just pull the uh, number of times they've lost so far. Uh, and we're just going to write this out and into a, a log. But it'll be something we could throw this into a UI, for example, or a career page for the, the player or whatever. Um, how, however you want to do this, it's, it's pretty flexible, so you can kind of tweak it to however you need this. But let's actually go and grab those uh, statistics. Um, so the way you do that is just play fab. There we go. Uh, API client. Uh, and I'm forgetting again to capitalize it, client API. And we want to get player statistics. Uh, and so this getting player statistics is fine. We can just pull those and it will work. Um, but what we want to do is actually to be able to assign or, or change a player's uh, number of wins or losses. That will come later. Um, so here, let's do a new get player statistics request. Um, again, if you're unfamiliar with how to find these things, um, PlayFab has an API documentation, and a lot of this is going to match. So if you have a get player statistics request, you probably need to invoke get player statistics, uh, and you can kind of rely on that. Uh, so let's throw this in some brackets and actually create what we're going to do. And in this case, we're going to get a list of statistics back. Um, so uh, statistics names, which is really hard to say. <laughs> um, we're just going to do a list string uh, and create a list of strings. Um, so this is using the uh, .NET list constructor. So if you just do this and then you can provide things, it will automatically in insert them into the list for you. Uh, and we want games played. And that's going to return the number of games we've played as this user. Uh, so we have this. Let's send that request. And we need something to respond to this. Uh, typically, there's two things that you're going to get. You're either going to get a success or a failure. Um, so let's respond to the success by just doing E. Um, I need to stop using E. That's a, that's a really bad habit. Um, so we're going to use a, a um, I've completely forgotten the word for this, but we're going to use a um, interpolated string to actually uh, insert this. So th the, by putting that dollar sign in front, it means we can actually access variables from our strings. And so what we're going to do is say, um, you've played e dot um, request, or statistics, actually. Um, and we, we need to actually find the statistic. It, it's going to return a list of them, not just one. So because we're getting a list, we actually need to do something with this. So I'm actually going to find the first one um, using some link. Because uh, again, kind of a demo. So, so we're, we're taking a few cor corners to cut because you'll know how to write the, your code better for your situations than I will. 
Um, so so we're going for that for that. Um, so in this case, we're we're going to find an object here uh, with name. Um, name. We should call this stats. That's a much better name. Stat. Cool. I don't know why I don't give those names. Um, so statistic name uh, is equal to games played. And what this is going to do is go and find out which statistic has the, the statistic name of games played. We're going to grab that statistic and return that back. And then the return or result value of this first thing is the first result that meets that criteria, which in this case means it has a name of games played. And then we can grab the value and print that. And so this is going to grab the value of that statistic and print it out to our console. And that should be it. Uh, we do need one more thing, which is error handling. Um, so let's do error and log our error. And this is going to just give us a way to actually see if things did not go quite as well as we had hoped. Um, so e dot or error rather generate error report. And there we go. Do I not need that? I might not need that. Hold on. <laughs> um, I got ahead of myself, I think. Uh, error. No, that should be fine. All right. So I am missing a comma somewhere. Because this didn't do what I thought it was going to do. We need a bracket. There we go. OK, um, I, I hadn't closed the debug log statement, so we're actually uh, continuing that instead of starting a new uh, Lambda expression, new action. Um, so these are going to respond to that. Um, this gives us a way to actually get those statistics and process them. Um, again, good way to get like levels or um, characteristics of a player or experience points or uh, actual stats like strength and charisma and constitution, things like that. However, whatever fits your game, uh, this is how you would get them. Again, we're pulling these from the server um, and currently statistics are managed by the server. And so what that means is that we can't change them. We can just read them. They're read only. Um, so we are going to run this again uh, and get our player statistics. Um, this is going to be a little bit quicker, um, but we can do. Where... Here we go. And let's do testing, log ourselves in, and we should hopefully see a few messages there. Um, so you played 35 times, 36 times. Uh, things like that. Uh, there are, because these are happening concurrently, um, the events on the server side may not have processed. So you can see we actually got two 35. So we've played 35 times twice. It doesn't necessarily mean that we've only played 35 times. Um, so we've only got up, gotten up to 36. But if we go and look at PlayFab, we should see it at 37. Um, unless I've screwed something else up. <laughs> um, so let's go and see. Uh, yeah, we can see from the events uh, from 36 to 37. So it is happening. It, there is some delay because of the, the server needs to react to these events. Uh, and we don't necessarily know when that's happened. Um, so that's that. Uh, the next thing I want to do is try to implement this a little bit differently. Um, so currently we have an event that gets sent off and does uh, an, an event. And then we respond to that. What if we don't want to do that? What if we want to write these uh, number of times played ourselves? Um, so I'm going to change this slightly to make that happen, um, just because it'll be faster. <laughs> so we're going to do private int um, times played. And we're just going to grab this times played. And instead of debug.log, we are going to actually assign a value here. So once I get my indents to something that is slightly better, um, we can get this uh, and pull our bar played, or let's just assign that there, times played equals that. There we go. And we can swap that big long statement out with just the times played variable. And make sure our brackets are correct. Um, and there we go. Semicolon. Perfect. <laughs> Didn't forget one. All right, cool. 
Um, so this is going to record the number of times played into our player and then publish it back up. Um, so we, we've recorded that, and now we're going to replace this event. Um, we're just going to comment this out. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's hotkey control K control C here. If you're uh, using Visual Studio, otherwise it's just control um, slash to comment out blocks in Visual Studio code. Uh, so let's send off this fun thing to actually assign this. Um, this is not going to work the first time, so we're going to get an error um, because we knew, we have not enabled this behavior yet. Uh, but what we can do is update the player statistics. And that means we need a new update player statistics request. Uh, so let's do that and send this off with some statistics. And this is just going to take a list of statistic updates, uh, which I am having the worst time saying statistics. There we go. Statistics update. Perfect. <laughs> um, and so we do that. And then this is just a list of all these statistics that you want to update in, in the game. Um, so we're just going to do statistics update uh, and provide a statistic name. Uh, we want to work with games played. And we want to set a, assign a value. So what we're going to do is just do that. <laughs> we're just going to take times played plus one. There we go. Uh, what? <laughs> OK. For whatever reason, the semicolon on this gets weird. I also don't need one, so perfect. Cool. I did a bunch of things I didn't didn't need to do, but it, it worked. All right, cool. Uh, so let's do, let's do that. And then we're just going to add our logs again. This is going to fail the first time. So we actually want to have some information about why this didn't work. Um, so debug dot log. And we're just going to say um, games played updated. Sure. And now we have an error here. Uh, debug dot log error. And this is going to go and log our error here uh, that is going to tell us why this didn't work. Um, so we go error.generate error report. That should give us some information about why this doesn't work. Um, and yeah, I, I'm emphasizing this a lot because I think this is this would this caught me off guard the first time um, because I hadn't really anticipated it, but it makes a lot of sense. Um, and so hopefully uh, this emphasis means that you can avoid trying trying to figure out why this didn't work. Um, we're we're going to kind of walk through and, and show you how, how to make it work. Um, so test at that. And so if we log in here, we'll lose a few times. Uh, and so we can see you've played a few times. Uh, games played updated. I believe that's what we meant to say. And it didn't fail. Huh. Well, that's new. Um, so uh, I might have might 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 have skipped a bit. Um, so let's go and, and try this again. Let's go into here and go into our title settings. And see if I left something on. Um, so title settings are going to be all the settings for your title. Um, you can you can configure a bunch of things here, uh, set all that stuff up, do emails, uh, etc. Um, we want our API features. I did leave it on. OK, so there's different API features that you can enable with uh, this thing. Um, so this first set of four is going to allow different clients to do different things. Um, and so this this gives them access to things that you may not want to give out. Um, depending on what you're doing or how you're implementing this, you can choose. Uh, but all of these are off by default. I, again, have been testing, so this is on. Um, but this is how I would expect it to be uh, if you were creating a new title here. Um, you would get nothing. Um, so this client to post player statistics allows a client to post statistics. It means they can send updates of statistics to PlayFab and have them be updated for you. Um, again, that means people can override things. Um, so we're, we're going to do that. Um, so we're still playing. We're paused. Now we're getting errors. Uh, that's pretty cool that it just works without having to do anything else. But we're going to just pause again, because uh, then I don't need to restart. 
uh, and we can turn that back on. But the issue we're getting here is this API must be enabled uh, for client access in the game manager API features list. Um, so if we go back here and turn it on, uh, we can just enable this and save. And now we'll be able to send those requests again. And that's going to go and update our number of games played. Cool. Um, so this is just going to keep counting up. We've effectively made a uh, cloud counter. Um, so we're at 44. Um, and that's not th these are getting kind of high. I, I think I'm a better player than that. So we're actually going to go and change them. Um, so we're, we're going to just pause the game here. We have 54 uh, and we're just going to go and click our player. Uh, that's not how you do that. Click our player. <laughs> um, I made this private. That makes this harder. Um, so we're, we're going to stop, I guess, um, and go back here. Uh, that would have been so smooth. And now it's not. Um, but we're going to make this public now so I can edit it from the uh, inspector a little bit easier and try this again. What we're going to do is basically pause the game and change that value. Um, th this is this is just a way things on clients can can do anything they want. Um, and so you once th things that you want to function in a specific way uh, don't necessarily have to do that if they're running on somebody else's computer because that person can do whatever they want. Um, and so that's sort of what we're doing here. We're, we're kind of simulating that. Where I can just go and say this actually equals zero. Um, and we actually do not have any losses anymore. Uh, we can reset that statistic. That is the wrong thing to press. There we go. Login. And so this will count back up again. Uh, so we can just pause. Open up our cube, select our player and change this to, I don't know, negative 100. Sure. <laughs> so let's run this now. Uh, now we have negative 98, negative 97, uh, negative 96 and, and so on. So, so this is a way for you to kind of tweak that. Um, so if that's something that you want, for example, cloud saves might be useful for this. If you want people to be able to store um, a game state and be able to pick it up on another device, this is something that makes sense. For what we're doing, where we're storing player statistics and actually tracking like career history and uh, stats over the course of playing this game, it makes slightly less sense. Um, and it also opens up this uh, potential especially if the if things matter a little bit more than the number of games you've played. Um, for example, if it's like the amount of in-game currency you have, um, players being able to change that themselves probably isn't a good idea. And this way, uh, if you turn that off, you can actually have player or the server handle the transaction um, th based off of an event. Um, so you can you can work on it that way um, and it saves you a little bit of that. Um, but that is, I think, most of everything that I wanted to cover. Um, the cool thing, the thing that I, I got super excited about was this Playstream <laughs> um, feature, which lets you actually see all these events come in and actually work with that. The other one is the ability to, first off, change these things uh, and segment your users so you can actually have certain people um, doing different things. Uh, the example segments are for different things. Um, but you can tweak that however you want. Um, so, for example, we had one for players who played a lot. Um, so I created a new segment here for players who played a bit. Um, it's for like greater than five, I think three. Uh, and this just records players into that segment so we can actually track them independently and see, do these different players behave differently? Do they get further than people who are new to the game? Things like that. Uh, it gives you a little bit of that. Uh, ability to tweak and control and actually get some information. I think that's one of the, the cool things about adding cloud into your games um, is you actually get some of that uh, ability to kind of observe how things are happening at a larger scale. You can see what's going on. Our player is losing right away. Um, and if so, why? Maybe because players lose like 20 times, we should one, pause it when somebody selects off of the off of the game, but also maybe when you restart a level, maybe you don't initially start it until some input happens. You can use this to sort of drive those decisions because you can see somebody just lost 50 times in a minute. Um, that's probably not what we want. And it's probably not helpful for them to just constantly be falling on the screen. There might be something else you can do. 
Um, so it gives you some of that insights. Um, but yeah, that's, I think, everything. Uh, if there are any questions, we do have a little bit of extra time. So otherwise, I'll just keep talking um, and, and then hand it off at the end of the hour. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will be doing uh, leaderboards next week, um, which means you will all be able to uh, post your different scores out to this leaderboard and, and do online leaderboards, um, which basically gives you a way to do high score lists, um, as well as a few other things. Um, so we're going to be looking at that next week, if that is interesting to you. Um, but this is sort of the prequel to that. It gives you not just high scores, but also like game telemetry. So you can actually figure out what's going on. Um, so uh, I should point out, I've been talking about these uh, segments doing different things. That's under the experiments tab. Um, that's when you can create these that would uh, tweak different things. So you can actually have multiple experiments running that will operate on different segments of your user base that will tweak different things within your game uh, and maybe maybe just change some things slightly so you can actually test out a, a change uh, to, to different things over time. You can actually figure out, does this work for this small segment of users? And if so, should we roll it out larger or things like that? Yeah, that's, that's it. So thanks you so much, everybody, for watching. Uh, and I hope to see you in the next video next week. Um, also, if this is weird and you don't know how we got here, uh, if you go over to the Reactor YouTube, you can also go and check out um, how we created this game if you're looking to get into game development or how we got started with the login process, if that's something that you want as well. Uh, and that kind of introduces PlayFab as well and kind of gets you, lays the foundation for what we did here. Um, so those are both available on the Reactor, uh, Microsoft Reactor YouTube channel. Um, so thanks, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. So. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much for putting together such a great uh, session. We appreciate it. It's uh, good as always. Um, so for everyone here, if you still have any uh, more questions for uh, Sam, he's going to be here for like a couple more minutes. If not, we'll wrap this up. And uh, one more thing, uh, as, as uh, Sam mentioned, if you're interested, you can go to uh, uh, Reactor's uh, YouTube channel um to check uh, the the first event that sam did regarding this uh, this session and um also for everyone who's interested sam's having another similar session next uh wednesday and um please if you have a few minutes uh, please fill out the reactor survey um just uh, put the uh, event id 15012 and um that's it. We'd love to hear your feedback. If uh, there are no more questions, as I mentioned, we'll uh, wrap this up. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. All right, perfect. Thanks again, Sam. Uh, have a good one, everyone.